Hi everyone, I'm Dick Beardsley. Welcome to The Fishing Scene. Folks, this show is dedicated to all the moms and dads out there and all the little kids that want to get into fishing, but they say, I don't have a boat like the Beards. How can I go out and catch fish? Hey kids, moms, dads, you can catch plenty of fish. There's lots of action to be had real close by. Numerous lakes around the entire state of Minnesota have public accesses. Many of the lakes have fishing piers where you can get out there and, and fish from the piers. And moms, dads, kids, they will have a ball. Watch. Now, this fish might not be very big, but let me tell you this. There's going to be plenty of action. And when it comes to kids and fishing, that's all that matters is plenty of action. And it's real simple. This cast are out there trying to find an opening. Nope. If you can. I found an opening, but he got me in the pads. But I can feel him coming through there. There he comes. It's not quite that difficult. There we go. Hey. Oh, man. Hey, folks, sunfish in the shallow water. That's not too bad of one, actually. Sunfish in the shallow water. From now right through the summertime, it is easy, it is fun, and you will have plenty of action. And you might even get a few fish like this that you can take home for the frying pan. We're gonna get out here. We're gonna have an action-packed show today. No question about this. We wanna get the kids excited. That's what fishing is all about. Get these kids involved. It's a great outdoor activity you can do with, with uh, all ages of kids, even little, small kids. Look at that. Oh, is that fun or what? Huh? I'm telling you. Hey, I'm 47 years old and I'm having a ball. Who doesn't like having action and sunfish pound for pound, even a little guy like this. Look at that. He's not a whole lot, he's not even as big as my hand, half the size of my hand. But you know what? These little fish, these little sunfish bluegills, I'm telling you kids, they give you a fight pound for pound as good as any fish that's out there including big old muskies. And you'll get a lot more action fishing for these than you will for just about anything else. Watch this. Float hits there. Let it sit. It's moving to the side. Up. Oh. And sometimes they, you don't even have to have them pull the cork all the way down. Oh, there he goes. Oh, he came out of the water. He thought he was a bass. Uh huh? Look at that. Hey, and this is, this is fun. What kid would not have fun doing this? You will, I guarantee you, you will catch a fish almost every cast. And the key is, is to find these little open pockets. The fish, you fish in shallow, very, very shallow. And docks are good uh, under boats. You know, if their boats are moored up to the edge of a dock. Swim rafts, there's always sunnies. Even sometimes crappies and bass hiding under those swim docks too. And every once in a while, you might pick up a northern pike, even a walleye. But I don't know a kid out there that doesn't like throwing a little bobber out there, a little float, and watching that thing start dancing around. That means he's got a fish that's getting ready to take it. Just kind of jig it, let it sit a little bit. Reel it in a little bit. And if you can find areas where there's some, like here, where we've got a few lily pads out there. Oh, there's one little guy. Look at these, though. I'll tell you what, these sunfish, bluegills, they'll zigzag right through the water on you. No, we're not catching big fish today, but we're catching lots of them. And we're just throwing these back. Now, we're using a, a small piece, a, a wax worm and uh, you can use them over and over again. As long as you have even a piece of them, that's all you need. And also, if you don't want to go buy a waxworm, go in the back into the garden, dig up a few angleworms, and they'll work just as fine too. And you don't have to use a very big piece. As long as there's a little something on there. There we go. Oh yeah. He's swimming right towards me. He's like a racehorse. Oh, now he got down the weeds on me. 
Oh, and boy, they spin, and there's a little bit bigger one. And sometimes when the action's really hot, you don't even need a piece of bait on there. Just that small little jig, and you'll, uh, you'll catch them too. Let's get back out there and get some more action. I know right now those kids are probably drooling and saying, Mom, Dad, we're going fishing right now. And it is a wonderful sport that we have. Take a, fit, kid, take a kid fishing day is coming up in, in Earth one. Oh, that's, that's, there's a nice one here. It's a nice gill. <laughs> oh, he's getting me in the pads. See if I can get him out of there. Oh, this, this is a bigger one. Uh, I worked him through there. Just put pressure on there. You get him up in the weeds like that, you put pressure. Sometimes they'll swim their way right out of there. Now he's got stuck on that last lily pad there. Let's see if we can get him out of there. Now he might got, I'm gonna just let some slack line now. Sometimes they get hung up, let some slack line. I can see him there and sometimes they'll swim their way out of there. But this one, this might be a lost cause. I'll tell you, those fish, they'll go side to side. And if you're fishing in an area where there's a lot of pads like here, I can see him, huh? He's down there, he's a pretty, pretty nice one. We'll be back with more sunny fishing after this. It's time now for our DL Marine and Outdoors Tip of the Week. When you're fishing for panfish, like sunfish, it's best to downsize your bait. Remember, they've got a very small mouth. By downsizing, you'll definitely catch more bluegill. There he got loose. There he got loose. Hey, now there. Hey kids, that's a gill anybody will be proud of. That's a nice, that's a nice bluegill right there. We let him work him safe out of that pad. I'll tell you what, that's a dandy right there. We'll get him back in the water. Our weather conditions today aren't too bad, although you wouldn't know that we got a pretty good southwest wind blowing, but right now we've got the air temperature right around 80 degrees. Water temperature, now this is just a guesstimate, but in the shallow water, I would imagine we're in the probably the upper 60s right now, and our water clarity is very, very good. So we got clear conditions out there, and what we're using, it's very basic stuff. Now, the spinning rod and reel, that's something, I'll use this same rod and reel for walleye fishing, uh, jig fishing, or live bait rigging. You can basically use any type of uh, rod or reel combination. Now, for the kids, especially the younger kids, a spin cast rod and reel is probably the easiest. I don't have one with you to show me, but that's where you have the, the push button and you cast it out. It's uh, a little easier to use than a, a spinning reel like this. Light line, six pound test, you can even go uh, lighter than that. But if you buy a reel and rod from the local uh, like Lake Sports Shop, hey, don't worry about that. If it comes spooled up with eight or 10 pound test, they're gonna still bite you, I, I promise you that. Now the key is, then is using a real, real small, small jig. Now what I'm using here is a 1 64th ounce jig. It's very, very small. Now if you were gonna just try to cast that by itself, it'd be difficult to cast. That's why you go with a small float. Now I like a weighted float because it makes it easier for the kids to be able to get out there and cast, and it also is gonna sit upright a little bit more. Now we're fishing in real shallow water. I don't even need my polarized sunglasses on to see down in there because the water's so clear. But you can see there's lots of weeds down there. We've got lily pads, and we're just kind of fishing for those open pockets and cast through those open pockets. Now, a lot of the fishing piers around the area, they don't have all these lily pads around them, so it's gonna make it easier for the kids for casting. And then just cast out there, let her sit a little bit, and uh, when that float starts to move to the side or starts to go down, you gently set the hook, and those kids, I'll tell you what, moms and dads, you'll be their heroes. Oh, did you see that? that oh, he's getting in the pad. If they do that, just put tension on them. There, he came out of there now. This might be a bass even. Oh, broke my line. 
That was a nice fish. I'm telling you. I'm not sure what it was. It was either a northern or a or a uh, or a bass. It definitely was not a sunfish. And now that's, that's going to happen. This is a good lesson. That's going to happen from time to time. And the kids, you know, they get pretty upset. They just lost their favorite bobber or, or their favorite jig that they've been catching a lot of fish on. And that's where moms and dads, you need to get in and explain to the kids, hey, that happened. You're going to lose fish. You're going to lose your equipment once in a while, like some of the tackle, like we just lost there. But that's why you want to have a few extra with you. Now we're going to get tied up and uh, get back out there. Oh, missed him. There, oh, missed him again. There we go, oh, nope. You know what happened, I think? Oh yeah, my, my cork slipped down a little bit. Slide that back up there. And you can get, you can buy little like spring bobbers that actually, uh, if the, that snap right on. And if they, if they slide a little bit, just take that line and wrap it around a couple of times and they'll, uh, they won't slide down like this one. There. Okay, let's get her back out there. And see this. Oh, I got my bait. I need to thread that back on there. And just take those wax worms or a piece of crawler or an angle worm and just thread them right on your hook all the way on. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. This isn't a, a, a finesse thing at all. Just get that bait on there and you'll have action. There it goes. Oh, did I get him? Oh, this is a big one, kids. I'm telling you. I don't know if I can get this guy in. <laughs> hey, look at that. He's not, a, he's not a whole lot bigger than my jig, but it's a fish. And you know what, moms and dads, it really helps teach the kids the part of catch and release. Obviously, a lot of kids, they're going to want to keep every fish they, that they catch. But uh, whoops, there he goes. Get him back on the water. It's a good lesson, you know, if you want to keep a few fish for the frying pan, if you get some big enough, that's great. But, you know, I know kids want to take the fish home and show the kids, the neighbor kids, that they caught a bunch of fish. But, uh, you know, if you get a few to take home, that's no problem. But it's a great, great opportunity to teach your kids about catch and release. I don't have much of a bait on there this time. It just, oh, there he is. That's a little bigger than that last one. Boy, they like to get to those pads. There he goes. Oh, worked him through there. <laughs> you kind of got to horse him through that stuff if you get in there. Again, not a very big fish, but not a bad one either. Give you something tugging on the end of your, uh, something tugging on the end of your fishing rod, and that's all that matters. Just pop it once in a while. That'll sometimes get their attention. I don't have much. Of, oh gosh, I wasn't paying attention. To, there we go. Oh, come on there, little guy. <laughs> All right, hey, this is a lot of fun. Moms and dads, kids, the whole crew, you'll have a ball. Don't go away, we've got more sunfish action, fishing from shore, coming up next on The Fishing Scene. Our Detroit Lakes Tourism Bureau Photo of the Week is from Naomi Walebski of Fargo, North Dakota with a nice sunny from Franklin Lake. Cork Stanson. There he is, oh yeah. <laughs> He's like a big old bass. He's a little sunny. Come here, little guy. <laughs> oh, that is a little guy. It's amazing they can even get the hook in their mouth that small. Come here, buddy. You go back and grow up and come back in a few years. Good spot. Bam, there he is. <laughs> Boy, they fight. I'm telling you, pound for pound, those darn sunfish, even the little ones. Look at him go. Trying to keep him out of the weeds there. Oh, you got up on that reed bed. 
Come here, buddy. Got himself all wound up in some salad. Come on, big guy. Go back and grow up too. Just got, as you can see here, just a nibbin of a piece of waxworm on there. Just a nibbin of a piece of waxworm. Hardly at all, but it's enough. It's enough to get him to bite it. I'm gonna re-thread that back on there. So you can catch a lot of fish on one little waxworm. There it is. Oh, missed him. When you miss him, you set the hook there. There he is. Oh, I missed him. I had him on there. Um, there it goes. Oh, missed him again. Just let it sit there for a little bit, and they'll come back. Either that one or another one. Now, that one got my bait. Just thread them on there, just like that. Right on the on your hook, just like that. Just like you would an angle worm. There. And they're not slimy and they don't bite or anything like that. Very easy to use. Ooh, good spot. Bingo. Yeah, come on, buddy. Oh, he's going for the pads. There, oh, got him over the pads. It's like those guys that bass fish on the bass fishing TV shows. They horse them in over those pads. You go back there, buddy. Oh, right on the edge of the pad. Bam. Just like that. Oh, man. If I was a little kid and saw this show, I'd be begging. Oh, he got up in that weeds there. Oh, come on. I'd be begging right now before the show was even over. Mom, Dad, we're going fishing. And moms and dads, there's no excuse not to get your kids out there because it's easy to do. Even if you've never fished before, it's very easy to do, and the kids will just have a ball. Sure beats staying inside playing computer games and Nintendo, I'll tell you that. Watch that cork, it's popping. There it is, yeah! Come here, oh, got off there. We'll get her back out there. I mean, you talk about action, it's every cast. And every, I don't know a kid out there that won't have fun doing it. There it is. Oh, that one really took it under. I'll let her sit there and see if another one comes and gets it. Oh, missed him. We'll bring it a little closer, see if another one comes and gets it. Jig it a little bit. No takers. You might have got my bait. Yep, that's what happened. So we'll get baited back up. Boom, there he is. That feels like a little nicer one, yeah. But once in a while you get little bigger ones, it gets a few mixed in there. Not like that one that we got, that one was a dandy. And then we got that one that Broke us off that I think was a bass or a northern pike. And they get into those seaweed like this or some junk on your line, make sure you take that off of there. And they're very easy to unhook. Rarely are they going to get it way down in their gullet, so you don't have to dig for it. And if they were, just cut the line and put on a new jig. But otherwise, most of the time they're just hooked right there in the lip. They're very easy to get off. There it is, oh yeah, that one. Oh, this is a better fish. 
if I can keep, keep him out of the, oh, he's getting in those pads. There he comes. If I don't fall on my keister here, there's a, see? Here's another, if you're gonna eat some, it's a good eating size right here. Look at that nice gill, huh? Kids, we are fishing from shore where you could be fishing right now. And you'll catch them just like this. Hey, kids, moms, dads, I'll tell you what. Get them out on a pier, on a local dock, out from the rocks like we are where there's public property on some of these area lakes. Small jigs, a little float, a piece of crawler, or a wax room, you're gonna catch lots of fun. You'll have a fisherman for life. And please remember to practice selective harvesting. By doing so, we'll continue to have great fishing for years to come. I'm Dick Beardsley. Thanks for joining me today on the fishing scene. I'll see you out there on the water.